Hey, what's up good people? Guess what? I have the QHX Strife. I'm gonna call it QHX Strife because it has a QHX marking over there. Although QHX is kind of hard to pronounce, so maybe I'll just call it the HX, QH. Okay, I'll call it the Kicks. How's that? The Kicks. I think that's quite cool, Kicks. Kicks is pretty easy to pronounce. Okay, I'll call it the Kicks Strife from now on. Quite a while ago, Enoch was the first one that I know of that posted links to this and he said, well, this is a knockoff Strife. The next thing I know, Raphael of Blaster Revolution bought one for himself and he shared this with everyone else as well. And I thought, well, it'll be a cool thing to have since, you know, it looks like a Strife and let's just see what it really is about. And lo and behold, Enoch and Winston Wong, I think his name is Force Blasters or Force Toys or Blaster Force or something. I'm sorry, Winston. I'll put a link to Winston's carousel in the description box below. But yes, the two of them got together and they decided to send me one just so I could share it with you guys. And here's a closer look at what the box is like, the contents and the way it's laid out inside the box. You could see it really looks like a Strife with the jam door and everything. And it's got this, um, I don't know what you guys call this. What, what is that? Like the end cap thing? And it has a carrying handle, which is really cool. And then it has a full M bus flip up side. It has reels on the side. It's got a muzzle piece, very much like the Vector. It's got a nice, thick, fat full muzzle. It's also got a nice banana mag. And these are all in OD green. And the blaster itself is in black and white. And this is really cool because I like this colorway. It looks kind of awesome. The next thing I want to point out is that yes, it does have some AccuFix here. Even the picture shows AccuFix. So yep, uh, it's DIY something. I don't even know how to read this word. And over here, I can read Elite Series, but the only Chinese words I can really read is um, 全自动. And I have no idea what this is. Fa something T. So I'm just guessing that it means that it is a fully automatic firing system. That's what I think. And the next thing I want to point out is that yes, it has this logo that says USB. So I'm assuming that it's going to be charged by USB. So let's turn this box around and we'll see everything that it has. So it's got this, the back stock attachment, it's got the carrying handle, it's got this, this upper piece over here. And then it's got this flip up side. It's got the front muzzle piece or the I don't know what you call this anymore because if this is the muzzle, what is this? The four barrel piece? Yeah, the four barrel piece and then muzzle piece. And it's got side rails. It's got vertical grip that I failed to mention just now, but you guys saw already. It has this piece over here that makes it flat, which is pretty cool. So it's separate. And then it has a mag. So it says here that it's using this bluish battery with a connector. It looks like a 16500 kind of a battery, I'm not so sure. And then there's a jam door, you know, instructions and everything. So this is what it comes with. Oh, target boards. Cool. It's got target boards. And look at this guys, this is all the different options that it has. Wow, uh, this is pretty cool. Wow, this, this, these two. These two look pretty damn awesome, look at that. Even the colorway looks dope. What the hell? Is this even a vector, guys? Like, do vectors actually have carrying handles? I'm not so sure. Oh, and the one last thing I wanna point out is that this actually has a carrying handle. I mean, the box, I mean. Yeah, I mean, carrying handle on a carrying handle, you know what I mean? But yeah, so let's open this up. Oh, it's got 20 darts, cool. Oh, there are only two targets. Okay, two targets and 20 darts. And we have the battery. Uh, I have no idea what kind of battery this is, but it has the connector over here as well. USB charger. So this, oh, okay, I see. So you have to charge the battery using a USB port, and then you put the battery into the blaster for it to be used. Okay, pretty straightforward. And let's just take this fella out. Oh, what is this? Target stands. Interesting. Wait a minute, there are four target stands, but there are only two targets. Doesn't make sense to me, but whatever. You guys know. Okay, cool. So here we go, guys. The Kicks Blaster is out of the box. Here's a closer look at it. Very much like a Strife. Let's try and disassemble the parts to see how easy it is to just take it out. So let's start with the back. Oh, it looks like it has some slots here. Maybe for future attachments, I don't know. Okay, that's simple enough. Very much like a Nerf standard attachment. Then we have, of course, the mag release button right here and then we have this mag which looks very much like a worker mag but the plastic is really really thin look at how much i could press it down look it's how squishy it is oh squishy oh this part expands a little bit too look at that this is quite cheaply made i would say then uh, let's take a look at how i'm going to remove this oh i guess i'll need a screwdriver to remove the vertical grip but Okay, so there's no button to press, it's just friction and a slight slip joint lock kind of situation happening. Yep. We have the rails here as well, side rails. I don't know how to take it out. Oh wow, this is just, this is loose. I didn't even intend for that to happen, but this happens. 
okay. So there's no actual way to secure this on. And this looks like a very wide version of Nerf rails. It's not Picatinny. Here we have IC. Ah, so it's another slip joint thing. And I'm assuming that if the side is just slid on, then I guess I'm gonna be able to slide this off without having to loosen anything. Oh, I was right, I was right. Let me see if I can get it past this part over here. This looks like tolerances are a little bit different. Oh, there we go. Nope, it is a little bit too tight now. Okay, so it is really, really, really loose here on the main body, but it is really, really tight here on this attachment piece. So let me see if I can remove this. I think this might be it. I'm not so sure. Let's see if I can pry this out. Yep, that's right. You gotta pry it out. Very much like how worker used to do it with their Chris Vector kit. So now I've got this pin out. Yeah, this pops right out. Just like that. Then I'm gonna undo the vertical grip. Remove it completely. Okay, remove the screw completely so I can slide this right off. There we go. So this retention method is very much like almost every other vertical grip meant for Picatinny spec. So uh, yeah, this is pretty darn secure. Then we have the four muzzle, which looks... What the hell? This is just... I mean, you might as well just not do that, right? I mean, this looks like it has to be glued in place. This is like... What the hell? So yeah, four muzzle attachment, which kind of sucks. Let me see if I can separate it this way. Yes, I can. Okay, cool. And then... This is just loose as well. So you've got these two tabs on the back plate, four screws here. Okay, interesting design. Whereas Nerf uses the orange kind of uh, posts. What do you call that, nubs? With the spring backing. But this one uses just this plastic alone. And it is quite, quite uh, loose. So you don't even hear the click. And then it has this muzzle piece, which looks pretty okay. And then how do I get this piece out? Let's see. Ah, there we go. Wow, that. That was bad. Look at that. I just warped the plastic just because I pulled it out. What the hell? Dude, this is this is some weak sauce shit. God damn it. This is the first time I handled it and now I kind of messed it up. So it is apparently some kind of a clip thing going on. See, it clips on. And so, man, you got... Okay, whoever's getting this, uh, you got to be kind of gentle with this piece over here because I just messed it up. I just... What the hell? Now let's see how I'm gonna take these rails off. Oh, that was easy. It just lifts right off. And it's a two-piece construction. Very much like the worker style side rails. You know, whether it's printed or not. You have this piece over here that sits inside and then for other brands, I guess, you actually screw in the rails on the side, but this one is just like a clip in. So I assume that it's the same for the other side. Oh, this one is like way more snug. Oh, but it is loosening up now. There we go, remove that. And finally we have this carrying handle that just slides right off now. And then we have the blaster itself, the Kicks blaster in its bare body form. There's a lock in place. Pull this, oh this still is locked I guess. There is another lock that I have to depress in here. Yep, that's right. Okay, so lock system is very much like the standard strife. Jam door, jam door. How do we open up the jam door? I guess I'm gonna have to use this part over here. Oh, this is a tight jam door. Yeah, jam door works the same as a strife and... Okay, pretty interesting. The slot, and I'm trying to get the light. I can't really show you guys the light. Bad light. But the slot that the darts feed into looks like it's a square slot. Let me just shift this light over here so you guys can see. Look at that, it's quite squared out. Interesting slot. Hmm. The next thing is to open up this battery cover and let's see what's under the hood here. Well, tolerances are actually pretty tight at some spots. It's not a good thing, you know? Okay, so the battery tray is really, really narrow. It's a small battery tray. And I think this is one of the main things that Raphael also pointed out when he opened up this blaster. It's that if you want to use different batteries, you're gonna have to, I guess, remount the entire slot here on the inside, which is quite a hassle because you're gonna have to cut this up. And the thing is, because this actually has a cover like that, you're not able to use the Strife spec battery covers. So that's uh, 
a bit unfortunate. If you guys want to change out the battery to something a bit better, for example, a 2S or 3S LiPo, you're going to have to find an external battery compartment somewhere. But I guess the off and on switch is here. So this is off and on. Why is there... Why is there two... Wait, there's a total of four. First position, second, third, fourth. One, three, N. N could be, I guess, four. Yeah, four auto, like non-stop. N, not for non-stop. You guys know, come on, it's math, right? But N, I'm just going to say it's N, N for non-stop here. So one is going to be for single fire. Three is for burst shot. N is for non-stop. And that's actually quite cool if there's a selector like this. Man, I gotta try this out. Let's just pray and hope that there's some juice in the battery left so that we can do this as a first impressions right now. Load up 10 of these AccuFates into that mag. Okay, we've got all 10 AccuFates in to the mag. Let's connect up this battery. But the wire coming off on the battery tray is pretty short. So um, I'm fumbling. Let's see if I can do this a little bit better on camera. Okay, here we go. Let's see how to fit the battery in. So like that. Okay, so the white battery connector has to be in front there. And then push this in like that. Yep, so everything is flush now. Grab my screwdriver and tighten this down. And with some luck, there's gonna be some juice in this. Let's just try and see how it goes. No, there's no juice, guys. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe it's an electronic lock. Oh, yes, there is some juice. So let's try this. So I've got it in the off position now. Nothing. Let's see how the single shot works. I'm gonna... S wait, wait, they fired off three. Let's try this again. Oh, that's a single shot now. Okay, try it again. Oh, that's cool, it's a single shot. So now I'm gonna fire off three. Let's see how this goes. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, how many darts do I have left? Let's make it at least five. Let's see if the full auto works. Oh, basically, let's see how well the full auto works. So, full auto. That's so cool. Okay, so we can actually hear the pusher motor actuating. So for a single shot, once again, when you pull and you hold down the trigger, it's just gonna fire off one time, you could hear it. And then for the burst shot, which is three rounds, just shift this up one notch. So that's three, pretty cool. And then you have the full auto. That's, that's pretty awesome, wow. Wow, I'm quite impressed, okay. Okay, I'm quite impressed. And of course, guys, the next thing I gotta do is just compare these two side by side. This is a standard Nerf Strife. Well, not really standard because I changed out the battery cover. The nuances actually look pretty darn spot on. Like, everything looks to be almost exactly the same. And I'm talking about like the details here and here as well. They look pretty spot on. This area as well, they look good. This is a little bit angled in, but for the Nerf one, it's flat on. And we have a little bit of an extra I guess an extra groove here that the Strife doesn't have. You guys have to imagine a jam door here, okay? Here looks roughly the same. Just a bit less details because, you know, it's not a battery cover. On the back looks the same. The grips look identical as well, so that's a trigger. Yep. And on the flip side, yep, it looks almost exactly the same, even down to this detail over here. Like, you could see these two diagonal slot designs. It is also apparent here on the Strife as well. But for this part over here, you got a bit more details because basically they have removed this uh, warning label. And then you got this and this as well. So it's pretty much spot on, almost like a one-to-one -one replica of the Strife, which is pretty awesome. But unfortunately, the rails are just much wider than compared to the Strife. So right away, we already know that the carrying handle from here is not going to work on this, which is unfortunate because the carrying handle is pretty awesome, but... It's just way too loose, so that is unfortunate. But uh, I guess this works. It should work. Oh, it's a really snug fit, guys. I feel that if I forcefully put it on, I'm not going to be able to take it off. So uh, I guess I will not force it on. It's really, really tight. So let's see about the stock thing. Oh, okay. So it fits pretty well. A uh, very slight wobble. Very, very slight. But acceptable so far. Let's see if this fits. I think I got the wrong side. So here we go. First side. Oh, this is not bad, look. So the rails fit. Yeah, pretty good. 
Reels fit. This vertical grip doesn't work. This would not work. But this though, I think this would work. Yep, this would work. And then the brittle part, the weakest part. This, oh, this fits as well. So you could actually put at least four of these attachments here on the strife. So you could use this portion at least, including this, even though it is pretty tight here, but at least you could use it on the strife and you could have like a Chris Vector kind of muzzle thing. And of course, if you put the full barrel in, if you remount that slot over there, pretty sure you could use this as well. So basically some parts are interchangeable, some parts are not. I'm talking about with the kick strife and the original strife, but a very nice one-to-one -one shell. Performance out of the box is actually pretty okay for what you're paying for. Granted that this is the battery right out of the box. I did not charge a battery yet, but so far I think it looks cool. Uh, in fact, I think it looks cooler this way. I think that maybe because of the color combination, if this was like silver or gray, at least this silver maybe, or if it was white, it would look really, really good, but uh, it's kind of like a mismatch right now. But apart from that, uh, I think you get what you pay for. And I'm talking about cheap. This is about like 25 to 30 US, and that includes shipping, I, I assume. But 25 to 30 US, you get a USB rechargeable battery, you get a full auto select fire strife, basically. Yes, of course, the rate of fire and the performance isn't gonna be as stellar as a modified, a properly modified strife because the voltage is rated at about 3.7 volts, but it's still, higher than what a stock strife is. A stock strife runs at about three volts, so 3.7 volts, just a bit better performance than a stock strife. For a cheaper price, I think this is not bad. I will have to open this up and show you guys the internals at some point, but right now, this is the first impressions and the first look at the Kicks Strife Blaster. Hey guys, I apologize for the bad camera angle and the bad lighting in this part. I was just about to open this up so I could film the internals video, but then I noticed something about the externals that I missed out. So first thing is the full barrel piece in this vector piece and I realized that this cap can be removed. Uh, it's a friction fit, just like that. And uh, in case you guys are interested in, I guess, kind of putting a flashlight in there. But yeah, I mean, this is very much like the uh, worker version. And then there's this little piece up here. Apparently it's a slide. You guys can see it's a slide on piece that goes right up here. So it slides on this part and there's a slight groove up here. So it's not compatible with the standard strife shell, but it is there. I don't know why they did that, uh, you know, since <laughs> they already molded this in. The next thing I want to say is that the paint job on this is not that fantastic. If you look at this area and you look closely, you could see, you know, uh, I guess this is kind of expected since this is a low budget production. You could see some of the paint spilling over, yep, in that area as well. And uh, some parts are not as clean, I suppose. Oh, and the bottom rail, guys, is a Picatinny spec rail. It's not a Nerf rail at the bottom. I'm trying to get the focus. It doesn't seem to want to focus properly, but you guys can tell it's a Picatinny rail. So, yep, this is something that I wanted to add on to the video because I missed out on all of this. Once again, a huge shout out to Enoch and Winston for sending this my way. I appreciate it, I like it, and I might use it for another build in future, I'm not so sure. Let's just see how things go. All right, everyone, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And you know the deal, drills pay the bills and teamwork makes the dream work. And I'll catch all of you in the next episode. Peace.